Hey everyone, in this week the structure of my guide will be a bit different because I didn't have that much time to prepare it because I was streaming the whole day, which means more matches for you, um, but less PowerPoint. So um, I hope you enjoy the format anyway, and next week there will be again the old PowerPoint style. We'll still cover the same thing as every week. We'll cover um, the card and the cards of the deck and the synergy of its cards, so to say. We'll go into a quick mulligan analysis. Um, we check the game plan. And then we'll talk about the different matchups, and after that we'll look at some example games. So, I hope you enjoy. The deck we're covering today is the Woodlands Giants deck. Especially in a control-heavy meta with Usurper and other shenanigans roaming the ranked ladder, it's good to have a deck that doesn't depend on engines for, the, for its power. So you can just drop like big units on the deck, like raw value, and nothing can, can change it. You can, you can lock it, but it doesn't really care. So let's start with the cards of the deck. The bronze core is all about five units. Um, because like the golds are a lot of big units, we have a lot of opportunity to grow all the small units to a big value. One of the most important units is, for example, Neca, because Neca is has the five keyword, of course. But if you play it, it also duplicates. So you have you, you basically play but two one-point units on the board, which both have thrive, so every time you play a high unit, you basically get two extra points. The sooner you play Neckers, the bigger they grow. And since they're like one-point unit, every unit basically grows it. And similar is the Arcus Boar, one point, but it also deals two damage to an enemy. And if it gets killed, it does two damage to a random en enemy again. But important here, it has the thrive keyword again, so also this will grow with every unit. The next card is the Drowner. It's Two points, there's two damage to an enemy, but uh, that's the five keyword as well. So it will grow. So basically, you'll try to play Neckers, Arcus for it, Rounders as soon as possible, and then grow, grow, and grow them. Um, Necker Warrior, simple, four points, has also five. And the filler card is kind of the werewolf. You can just use it to trigger um, your smaller units, um, so it they thrive. Um, but it's just like more or less a filler card. If you have it in run three, you can just mulligan it away. Um, what we have here is also Wild Navigator, because we probably have the highest unit, thanks to our gold cards. Um, this is basically a 5-point card for, uh, for 4 provisions, um, because it just boosts the highest alley unit, uh, just boosts any unit by 3. Um, and it would only boost an alley unit by 1, but um, if you have the highest unit, it will boost by 3. So that's why it's a decent card to have in the deck. Then we have Dimerisium Shackles. It's kind of useful to have at least a lock in your deck because against some decks there's like the one card you kind of need to lock. For example, if you go against Ancient Foltest, you maybe want to um, hit the Anna Stringer or like the Visigota with the Dimitri and Shackles. Um, so it's it's nice uh, to play against um, if you play against Ancient decks, which could get out of hand. So that's why the Maritium Shackles are for. Alpha Werewolf is um, basically a 4-point unit with which uh, thrive as well, so that's good to have, and it's immune on top of that, so why not? Forktail is uh, a 4-point card which deals 1 damage to all other units, and the interesting use of Forktail is um, it often gets quite a lot of value, because if you have, for example, a lot of thrive units on the board, um, Forktail will damage will their damage to them, but at the same time, um, the Thrive will trigger again, so you don't really do damage to them, so basically they stay at the same level, while the enemies will get um, hit by Forkchuk quite a lot. And if you manage to um, play against an enemy which really tries to swarm, or which still plays Witches, for example, Forkchuk will easily get you like 6-7 point of value, so um, it's just a solid bronze cat to have in the deck. Valtand Rider is interesting because if you control the highest unit, you will it will summon a copy of Valtand Rider from your deck. So it's a bit of thinning, but it's also just like solid eight points onto the board. And since it has like four power, it typically grows all your Neckers, Archispores, and Dranas, which is really solid to have as well. And then we come to the to the fun fun part of the deck, which is basically our big units. Um, simple big units are all spear tip like. 13 points just on the board. Then we have Old Spear Tip Asleep, is basically 9 points just on the board. Goliath is a bit special because it gives you 10 points, but it has a, a nasty death wish because if your opponent manages to kill the Goliath, then it summons the. then basically he will summon the lowest unit from the deck onto the board, which is. it's not that good, 
But if you can avoid it, it's pretty good. And how to avoid it? The best way to avoid it is with Weaver's Incantation. Uh, if you play Weaver's on the melee road, you can choose a card on your hand and consume it. So if you have, for example, a Goliath on your hand, um, Weaver's can just eat a Goliath. You will get the full points of Goliath onto the Weaver's, but like you have no negative effects from the Goliath. And the good thing is, every time like one of your big units goes to the graveyard, like the Goliath through the consume of the Weaver's, you can use your ghouls. And your ghouls are basically just choose any unit in your graveyard and boost by their power. They consume it, of course, so they are then uh, gone from the graveyard, so you can only use them once. But if you like eat one old spear tip, you immediately have like a 14-point ghoul on the board, and that's a bronze card. So that is pretty, pretty decent. Osmeral takes one step further because you can choose if you want to eat from your graveyard or from the enemy graveyard. And I already had it like um, quite often. Um, that, for example, there lies a nest, a, a, a T-Bore, for example, and snacking a T-Bore is like one of the best things you can do with Osral. Um, if the enemy doesn't have big units in your graveyard, they're in his graveyard, then you just snack from your own graveyard. So that's why Osral is um, pretty, pretty decent, because you, you have the choice, so to say. And that's like the big unit package. Then we have also Azul's Double Cross, because like often you can't, you don't have all your big units in the beginning of front one, so you want to use as a double cross to, for example, look up the old spear tap. And last but not least, we have Geld of Rivia. Since you're not the only one who is thinking about playing like big units in the control meta, um, we have Geld of Rivia to target those people. So if you have Last Say and Demi, for example, plays the same deck as you do, and he has, I don't know, like a big, big Rivia's incantation on the board or like old spear tip, you can just play Geld of Rivia. And since Geld of Rivia destroys an enemy with more than eight power, um, you probably Get, get the kill, so to say, and win the game with it. Especially if you play uh, with Footland Spirit, because like Footland Spirit has the power to boost the unit in your hand by eight. Eight extra points is a pretty, pretty good uh, value for a leader. And if you have last say, then the enemy can't do anything about it. So um, boosting, for example, an old spirit by eight makes this like a twenty-one point play. And a twenty-one point play as a finisher is this is this is decent, right? So. There's also like one thing I need to say immediately, like it's very important that you have last say, because if you use Woodland Spirit onto like a, a spare tip and the enemy has a card like Geld of Rivia, then you basically lost all the points of your leader ability as well. So try to get let's say not whatever the cost, but if you can match it, then like go for it. Like um, don't just give up around because you just think like, oh yeah, I don't care push for it, like try to win round one, get round three last thing. That's important. And that's all about the units. Now let's look at the mulligans. The deck has two phases and the first phase is the setup phase and the other phase is the execute or consume phase, so to say. Um, because your ghouls can only eat stuff from your graveyard, you need to get stuff into your graveyard. It means that um, cards like old spear tip, gold eyed and like um, the other spear tip, so to say, um, you need to play them in round one. Or you need to find a way to get them onto the graveyard with, for example, consuming them with fevers. If you don't do this and you draw ghouls in round three, you will have a hard time to find good value for them. So it's better to play like the giants twice. And for this, in round one, you obviously want to keep cards like your giants, and you want to also keep um, some, car uh, some bronze cards. So if a good mix between five units like Neckers, Archispores, and like, let's say, I'll stop cross, Goliath, Old Spear Tip, and um, the other Spear Tip. In round three, you, you want to try to get for, go for cards like Geld of Rivia, because like, as I said, it's a good finisher against most of the decks. If you run against a deck which probably doesn't get a unit above a, eight power, you can mulligan um, them away. But typically, Geralt finds value. You want to have all your uh, graveyard eating cards like Osril, Ghouls, and um, that's like the major, major guidelines, so to say. You will always um, have uh, get cards like Wrath and Rider, um, the Metroid and Shackles in your hand. So depending if you think you will get a lot of value, keep them in your hand or get rid of them. Also, it's always better to keep your mulligans front free because you can like um, better customize your hand against the deck you're playing than um, if you already spent all your mulligans in round one. So if you have no chance in round one, then definitely spend your mulligans. But if you have like already a, a decent mix, but it could get better, then probably refrain from mulliganing because in round three, this will be this could, this could be your doom, so to say. 
Okay, so let's go really quickly about the gameplay plan because I already explained a lot while explain, um, while talking about the cards. So round one, you start off with your Neckers. At best, um, go for Achis Boy as soon as the enemy has deployed a unit. You go, you go for Drowners, um, then you have set up all your five units and then you start trying to get cards out like Valtrand Rider. You may need to play something like Old Spirited before that so it actually like triggers uh, the effect. And uh, before that you can also like play cards like Werewolves if you have them. And then you basically buff up your, all your Thrive units, you play your big um, like big giant so to say. And um, at some point the enemy either like gets pushed out of the round or you, uh, you pass at some point. Because if you're in red and you can like overtake him, you can like get some cards out of him. And um, you don't need to win round one if you can like get the enemy down to two cards. Uh, or get two cards out of him, so to say. Um, that's basically round one. Depending if you won round one or the enemy won round one, um, you need to approach round two differently. Basically, if the enemy won round one, then you are at his mercy. Um, just play, like try to, to not get pushed out of the round while keeping um, a lot of good cards, like not a lot of good cards, but like keep like short round burst finishes for and free. Because you're really good in a long and a short round even more than a short round, I would say, than in a long round, because um, cards like Ghoul, um, Osrael, or just like Spirit and stuff, um, just give you a lot of value in a short round. So if you need to go in a short round, that's perfectly fine. And that's also like the, the interesting thing if you play against engine decks or cards like Ifne, who really benefit from a long round. If you won round one and should, then try to bleed them in round two. Try to get all the good cards out, try to make them um, try to split the round, so for example they can't get the full value of Anstrenger in the, in the full test, the engine deck so to say. Um, try to split them, try to push them and then overwhelm them with your big units in a short run free. That's the good, uh, the, the good idea. If you have like, like a lot of um, five units left and you think the enemy, enemy doesn't benefit that much from a long run free, then you can also go into long run free. Um, establish your five units again and then like use your ghouls and your, your big units to just grow them out of them. And keep Gale of the Frivia as last, uh, as your finisher, so to say. And then let's go into the matchup analysis. Elf Control. The deck is still here, maybe not as popular, but still strong. Shiryu is your big enemy, so try to stagger your five units at the end of the game with Valt and Navigator, so Shiryu won't be able to destroy all of them. In general, try to offset your big units so you won't get hit by Double Scourge, and try to save them for later, so your enemy can't use the units to line them up. If possible, try to bleed them in round 2 and finish them off with big ghouls in round 3. Ancient Foltest Ancient Foltest can beat you in a long round, so try to bleed round 2 if possible. Use your luck wisely to get rid of units like Anna or Visigota. If the enemy starts with Visigota, buffed by tactical advantage, don't hesitate and use Geralt of Rivia to get rid of it. Any good engine that Geralt can remove is a good engine. Hand buff. Win round 1 with poor points and then bleed them in round 2 so their Flavandrel won't find the optimal value. Dry passing in round 2 also enables them to establish carry over with various dwarves so pushing round 2 can really ruin their plan. Using Thrive units in round 1 is encouraged because the longer you wait the more hand buffed units with additional effects they create. War dancers, for example can quickly get rid of your small Thrive units. Soldiers. They have some key combos that you can disrupt by splitting the rounds like Jermaine, Slave Infantry with Rygriff. Also, don't pull out your big units early because cards like Leo Bonhart or Vatier can easily kill or even jump them. Be prepared to be hit with locks, so it's okay to grow five units early and not wait until you have set up all of them. Bloodless Krach Be prepared that Krach will finish off your low power five units, so grow them at least once before you set up new ones. Especially Neckers are good to start since you can only hit one of the two Neckers. Split Krach's rounds, especially when artifacts are played, so you can use the extra tempo and reduce the effectiveness of Wild Boar of the Sea. Through Thrive, you can buff your units to get out of Bloodlust, so try to postpone Bloodlust as much as possible. Now let's head into the example matches. Nah. Sadly. Okay, well... Then no, no run for now. Fry, 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 but no big units. 
against Emir, we probably want to keep this. I don't have like big units. This is like a big problem. This doesn't help me. I feel shit. I mean, we need to utilize um, tactical advantage here. That's like the big thing which we need to do. Maybe we can find a decent, decent lock target. Here's target. our chance. Don't banish my, don't banish my, my big units. It's funny how Woodland Spirit looks like the weakest leader in Monster, but it's actually the most popular leader despite having the most primary ability. Yeah, I mean like eight points is just so much. That's the thing. That's the thing. I, I hope he doesn't play second Witcher and hits my. Um, oh, perfect! Did I mulligan both my dramas away? I did. Shit. <laughs> I would have needed Dranas. Okay, yeah, Nekas, I don't care too much. Do we lock this now? I, I think like we probably will find a better lock target. But potentially it will get very dangerous. I'm sure I'll find a better lock target, that's the thing. Especially if you place witches, Ivo, Siri, whatever. Let's keep this. This may be like a misjudgment currently, but I really think we do. Oh, I just see that we don't have any higher unit here. Let's just... Um, because it will never get higher. Like, we won't use Time to get our hands dirty. No! He hit the spear tip! Damn, Mill. <laughs> I think he's playing, though. You have a Geralt, let Magnet grow. Your eyes. Yeah, but I don't want to play Geralt. Play a top Like, he's milling me. This. I don't like that. The question is, I we really need to play like round one now and bitter end because I can't play round three, it seems. This is problematic. I think I need to even play off of Werewolf now. At least if I can't have in the grave yet, so I can play a three point also. Nice. Yay. Maybe I really need to play Gerald of Freeway at some point. I don't want to pass here, because otherwise I have a million problems. Do I Geralt this? It's probably the, the highest unit he will ever play. And I need to win round one. Like, that's given. Okay, there we go. That, that saved me the, the round. And now the question is, like, how big of a threat is Mel? Typically we just... we should bleed him, maybe. We have the tools to bleed him. We have the tools to bleed him. Do we risk it in round 2? And 3 will be only ghouls, I guess. Okay, I guess. Let's go. Let's see what we do here. He may probably want to play Volgifords and stuff, so... I think I want to enable the Osril here. No, I don't want to enable the Osril. I want to just eat his, his T-board. Um, he will probably have Volgifords and stuff. But I don't care. Consume you from a point scrape yet, there we go. Where are you? T-bomb, nom nom nom. <sighs> Emir's alternate skin doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Oh, this one. I'm really disappointed by the skins, by the way. Like, they just look oh, like barbarian. some some really, Bumble. really... I don't know. They don't have a lot of variation. It's a, I, don't know. I think you can do more. Do you play Werewolf? So. I'm curious if you can play it. <clears throat> it's time. Can I do the moon? Okay. Should we lock that? 
No, we need the luck for the other ones. On the other hand, like, he will lock that then as well. When do we play luck? No, we can't, we can't lock our life. We'll see. Okay, there's a necker, at least a bit of thrive. Is this already I enough? Do what I must. Okay, so this we can get out of hand. So I think at this point... He can play Yennefer. Yennefer will give me six, six points, so... This will get six points. He has knights, but he needs to play at least two cards, right? You can't make Kaya, Kaya pay off in only two cards. I need to look for the ghoul, which is possible. I can't play boosts with Navigator. I can't play Thrive. I can't lock it. I need to pass it. I need to kill it. Oh, I need to kill it, so. Let's hope he needs to play at least two cards. And a good, yeah, he needs to. And a good thing is we already got Kaya. So bleeding was a good was a good idea. A few are decent woodland arcs in Kaya or game, but yes, most disappointing. Okay, there we go. Two cards. He actually got good cards and one card out of, out of it. The Aradin one. I think it's solid. I think that was really decent. And I just got the update on X plus and I'm a bit overwhelmed with your workbook system. What is it all about? How best to choose it? Ha! I have something right there for you. It's always nice. Uh, question here, do we get rid of the shackles? I would say yes. He played his big units, right? <laughs> this way he didn't like, uh, his spotter didn't work at all. Uh, about the reward book, again, go to Team Aritus. Wait, Aritusa.com slash academy. So there is a lesson on deck build, uh, a course on deck building, and there find a lesson reward book. So there can find a like video, like I think it's like eight minutes or so, where we um, tell you all about the reward book and like how you get the most value out of it. Um, so check it out. There are also other courses about deck building and how to better craft your collection and stuff. So maybe that's that's. Um, exactly what you can use. At least I hope so. Start the Axe Board. So we're one card ahead and one point ahead. It's actually pretty okay. Well, the one card, not the one point. <laughs> but this can grow. Oh, he locks it. Well, I don't care too much. I have one more drive unit. So one card ahead and with drive unit on the board. They're dead already. He's he's putting out the value. I still have more five units. Thanks, man. Check it out now. Awesome. Tell me if you if it helped. And I guess at this point we're playing this one because if he kills it, we're going to snack it. Okay, there we go. Now it looks better and better. Don't think. I think mulliganing, mulliganing the walk was a good idea. All roads, speak to Neil Dead Gard. doesn't help him too much. Let's push the ox for. Hey, Aaron Strick. Ancient Strick, sorry, for trying this one. Welcome, welcome to our little swarm of crickets. Hey there. How are you doing? Um. Yeah, let's just wait. And this is my finisher. I mean, both of my finishers for those, it doesn't matter. That's what I was thinking about. That's why I, I kept um, Ghoul. Because now we can just boost the Ghoul. We snack our... Uh, where is it? There. Yum, yum, yum. And we're already ahead again. We could have even played more of it. And we have one card. So, like, one card ahead. This was pretty decent. Giants! <laughs> no. Um, I think Chines are probably one of the better decks right now. This looks like a mirror, and it's, it's a problem because like in a mirror you always want to be second. Okay, this time it's good. We have the Chines here. This will maybe be our win condition. Okay, this is good. This is good. We have 
this for later rounds. We have nothing to trigger this though. I don't like the gravel too much. I think I should get rid of this as well. I think after this match we should make some changes to the deck. I think this needs to be enough, right? Let's see what he's doing. Winter Spirit. Start with the Necros. The safe, like, opening play. Yeah, I guessed. So the thing is, like, the good thing is if he plays Necros as well, we can just play Archetype and uh, Archspawn. Get rid of one of his engines. So the key is, like, having more engines than him here. Okay, he's playing Ancient Forklift, it probably means he's playing Forktails. If he plays a Forktail, we may want to play Ancient Forklift as well, but I'm not sure if he just plays Consume. So, I have no idea. Let's play this one first to trigger some of the... So if he plays Forktail, not so that you don't die, basically. I'm not sure but if I should boost something, because then I get... I can't um, utilize the drive. We'll see. We'll see how this will turn out. Skellig and Woodland biggest winners from update? Yeah, I think so. I think Woodland, like for me, I think Woodland is probably the best, best deck currently. That's why I'm currently trying it out. And then the Skellig a beast deck? I heard it should be pretty decent. Okay, he just gets rid of Nifral here. I mean, like, by not playing it before, like, it lost its thrive, so to say. It lost its thrive. I can play the spear tips now. I don't even have highest unit. You know what, let's play Spear Tip. I can play one more card. And then I probably need to... I'm playing a Krach Bloodless deck, really good. Aldrich buff is very nice. Yeah, I mean, like, Krach Control was probably one of the best decks last season. <sighs> I got rid of my... Um, units. Me. This unit, like, with the nerf of Wolfsbane, it's kind of... Wild Boar to see still there, which is good, but hey. Do I boost something? I mean, why not? We know the mysteries of time and space, all of them! Yeah, this is a good time to play the advantage. We're now 14 points ahead. You can always play Old Spear Tip to force him after round. Ooh, this is interesting. So, the question is. <laughs> when to you... Geralt? If we play Geralt now, we lose our win condition. Because this is... Like, if we have last card and have Geralt of Rivia, we can get rid of his... Of his woodland buff. So I can't play this. I also can't kill it. So I probably need to play old spear tip. Because whoever has the last C wins, right? On the other end, if we play this now... I'll get Knackers. Maybe an Archispor. Let's play it this way. Is Krach still the best leader in Skr as Brown going to see my play? Um, I think Krach is pretty decent as a leader, but I think Krach, uh, uh, Krach is a decent leader. But I really think that Brown will see a lot more play now. You know what? We eat his spear tip. Because we can. That will hurt him a lot. Probably will see way more play with um, the um, with the beast, I guess. So wait, wait, wait. Consume unit from your opponent's graveyard. Graveyard is melee. So this is melee. Right? Spear tip. Nom, nom, nom. He doesn't like that. That's a problem with blue. I need to play these cards right now, even though I want to keep it for later. But we keep this. This is like, as I said, this will be our win condition. 
Chichi is a brand is seeing more play, hence me running Gerald and Gerald P good against Beers and Big Monsters. Yeah, exactly. That's also why I'm including Gerald for me. I think he's currently a good tech choice in the meta. I'm not sure about Igni because like I don't have like especially here in this deck because like there's no way to line up the Igni. If you have ways to line up the Igni with movement effects or with pins, then it probably is fine. Question is I need to win this round. Oh no, I need to win this round, it's not a question, it's like it's a for sure. I, I need to win this round. But I don't have anything to eat for my ghoul. Oh he passes, thank you very much. Okay, now I have like the big question is I need last say, like this is my win condition as I said. I think I need to play long round, there's no way around it. Okay, we have Goliath. Problem is, if we play Goliath now, he plays Old Spear Tip. I got a problem. I have one Spear Tip to eat. So I probably need to eat that before he uses his Osrael, which is a good thing. So I could play Gu right now. And if he doesn't have. Yeah, he doesn't have anything to match Gu. So I could play Gu right now. I think this is risky, but if I don't use my spare tip now, he will with his Osreal. And I can't let that happen. It's my spare tip. <laughs> Only I eat it. I hope to see more variety in leaders now. Almost all skill leaders have potential. Square tail 2, Hensel and other aren't the strongest. Other 2, Nerder, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I tried Arhas Queen. Arhas Queen is, has a bit of a problem currently because the bronze is not supported too much. There's like an all in, it's an all in deck currently. Yeah, and instead of others, I don't know. Marcus actually currently tries to get uh, Usurper decks going, so that's nice. When do I stop this round? I mean, I need to stop immediately, actually, because otherwise he will have less to say. And he already got, like, all speed out of him. He still has Osriel, I guess. So he can still eat mine. How much polygons do I have? Free! You know what? Let's fish for some good cards and finish this. He needs to play at least a 5 here. So he can't play bronze units because he only has necklaces, arc spores, drowners. It's all not a 5. The only 5 cards he has, even like Alpha Bear is not a 5 anymore. And he needs to actually play 6 if now that I think of it. And the only way he plays 6 cards is by sacrificing a good card. There we go! Yeah, it's the Osreal. So he's eating my old spirit. Better now than, than later. The good thing is, uh, for him, is he has now um, the option to eat his Goliath, which I don't. So if I ever get a ghoul, I need to get this onto the grave first. Which is why I would probably need to snack it with my Weavers. I don't think he plays artifacts go away. That's perfect, good combo. Could winning condition. That's good in combination with this. It's not bad as well. I'll probably want to get rid of the Neck of Warrior, maybe. Because I want to get this out. I should have kept it, by the way. I might have think of it. I mean, this is like a different version. It triggers more often, so it's actually better, I guess. That's fine. Let's take this. I haven't seen uh, Unseen Elder being played at all, actually. I think of it. Okay, the thing is, I could play Fork Till immediately. If I play Fork Till immediately, I won't trigger that, which is a problem. But on the other hand, I deny him two growing engines. Is it worth sacrificing this value? I mean, it's like a 6 point play plus all the added value later. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this was smart or if I should have played anti Fortnite before. But he wouldn't have played Arcuspar after, so that's the thing. Let's play this immediately. 
maybe he runs um, another thing to kill it. Are there most creatures played free now? I'm not sure, is there actually a leader which is four? I don't know, to be honest. If I play Drana on the Arcspore, I have a chance that it hits me for that, so I think I'm going to take this. And... No! <laughs> was the first card that it could hit. One less five unit. But there was the chance that it, uh, it hit my ancient forklet, so that... There, I, I would... Uh, <laughs> I need to take the risk. So before we start with those, we need to... Oh shit, the thing is actually... If I, I could draw into Wild and Dredder. I may need to use my Woodland Spirit soon to get this out. What's up? <laughs> hey chat, please update Homecoming yesterday in my Priest 4 and normal today, but I start quaint right now after the pick of cards here when I press X again and stuff. You can start Priest before we reach the menu and the no stream. I have no idea what's happening here. Hey Crozai, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining this one as well. Appreciate it that you're here. How are you? Okay, what do you do now? If I Snack my go live now, I have the chance that I draw a Wild and Dryder. On the other hand, the chance is really slim. You know, we should risk it, I guess. By the way, I have no ghoul, so actually, this needs to be a finishing play now, I think of it. Because, no, this is actually a finishing play. But he can, like, eat it. Ah, shit! This is not good! I draw Wild and of course I draw Wild Hand Rider. <laughs> Shit. Man. Now you can deal with my uh, Weavers. Now I... Next time an enemy receives a boost. Let's look at this one then. Uh. Yeah, well. I'm so thankful. I misplayed that a bit. Let's see what he has here. I mean, he will kill my Alpha Werewolf there. That's the problem. Maybe I can. Maybe if I'm not using Woodland Spirit, but on the other hand, like, Woodland Spirit is more worth than my Alpha Werewolf, so never mind. I only turn turn. Okay, there's this unit, so it's a good thing if we can at least kill it with my girl. That's, that's why I said this is my win condition. Yeah, exactly. This is what I want to kill. Wait. Yeah, okay, okay. So, Alpha Wolf is not that much worth than my Wooden Spirit, so let's boost it. And this next is Wolf. Damn. There you go. That's why you include Gerald of Rivia. What's happening? Yeah, I know it's dead. Quent, it's dead. <laughs> Thanks. Nice! Even though, again, I got stuck with a stack of cards. Subscribe to see more homecoming deck guides and interesting gameplay matches and write me a comment down below for the next deck you wish me to cover. Thanks for watching and see you in game.